Well, thanks for coming, everybody, and thanks for staying all the way till the end. Just for that, I have a very special gift for you. Who wants $10,000? Raise your hands. Raise them up. Somebody doesn't want $10,000. All right, if you're a local Warrenton resident already, you're not going to be eligible for this. But everybody else, keep your hands up. To get this $10,000, all you have to do is go home, pack your bags, fill up your car, sell your house, and move to Warrenton. <laughs> you may have seen this clickbaity headline in the news recently. West Virginia town will give you $20,000 to move there. This is Morgantown, West Virginia. And they're not alone. Over 150 small towns and counties have offered something similar, ranging from $200 to $20,000. So maybe they're onto something. In fact, there's so many that somebody made a website. You can price compare it like Expedia. <laughs> let's find out if they are onto something. But first, let's talk about the time we're in right now. I wasn't planning to move back to Warrington when I was 23 years old. I moved back because my grandma B was in the final years of her life. I needed someone to help out around the house and help take care of her. The house was so important to her that it was her dying wish to keep it in the family. Now you can see those kind of places don't pay for themselves, so we turned it into a bed and breakfast, and that's Chilton House. We've since served over 5,000 guests and introduced them to Warrington, including a couple of our speakers tonight. I also run our local economic development group, Experience Old Town Warrington. So, what does this have to do with the free money? Let's get back to that. To get there, we have to take a couple steps. First, to say that the past couple years have been dramatic would be an understatement. But one of the most dramatic parts about it is the onset of remote work, as we learned from Mike today. For small towns, this is an incredible opportunity. Because for a long time, young people flocked to cities for job opportunities and entertainment. And now, they're sitting at tiny desks in their apartment. <laughs> Perhaps there's a better way. To talk about that better way, we have to understand what happened to small towns in the first place. So picture with me a town like Warrington. Beautiful spring day, 1997. Let's call it May 15th. Back then, just about 15% of people used the internet, and even fewer used it to buy anything. Now, that number has gone up 20,000%. And now, almost every one of you has bought something online in the past couple of weeks. In fact, there's a couple of you on Amazon, I can see you from here, <laughs> on your phones. Jokes aside, May 15th was the day of Amazon's IPO. You'll remember it as the day you became a millionaire if you bought Amazon that day, or the day you almost became a millionaire if you sold. But for small towns, that was a very different day. It took from small towns the essential tenant of their existence, the marketplace. No longer was it a place you could buy and sell. You could do that online, and it's a lot easier. And so they dried up. All that red across the map, those are rural counties and towns. In the 2020 census, despite an increase of over 22 million Americans in our country, more than 50% of rural counties lost people. I'm going to say this again because I think it's important. 22 more million people in the room and 50% of our rural counties didn't get a single one of those and lost some of the ones they had. These twin tornadoes of the rise in e-commerce and population decline hurt small towns everywhere. But thanks to remote work, there's hope. We know how important that is now. Before we get there, let's take you on one little journey to understand how economic development traditionally done. Maybe a dry topic, but we'll get through it. In the past, generally, a town or a county would offer a company an incentive package, ranging from tens of thousands of dollars to billions of dollars, to move their office, their factory, or their stadium to town. The problem with that is, if there's a better incentive down the road, or if the subsidy runs out, that location might not be quite so profitable anymore, and they'll move on, leaving behind unemployed people in a weaker economy. There's a new kind of economic development, though. 
One that invests in people and places, not just companies. Why? Because moms and dads don't just leave when the going gets tough. They invest in communities, they invest in school districts, they raise their families and they start small businesses. And this little upfront investment, whether it's $200 or $10,000 that we make in them, is paid back to the community a hundredfold over their lifetimes. So, if I give you this $10,000 here, will that help restore small town prosperity to towns like Warrenton? The answer is it just might. A study of Greenbrier, West Virginia, not too far from here, offered people a subsidy of $12,000 to move there. 33 people accepted, with an average salary of $120,000. That's more than double the average salary in Greenbrier, West Virginia. And estimates found that that generated $8 million in economic impact for just a few hundred thousand dollars up front. That's a pretty good ROI. So I do have bad news for you. We don't actually offer a $10,000 subsidy to move to Warrenton. <laughs> My apologies there, but it got your attention. We have done a number of different techniques over the past few years to change the way we do economic development. We've invested over $100,000 with our civic and philanthropic partners in our small businesses in the form of a gift card you can only use in Main Street and the streets surrounding it. Tens of thousands in grants directly to small businesses. And of course, if you've been to Warrenton any time in the past couple of years, we were one of the first towns to start doing outdoor dining during the pandemic. This has allowed Warrenton to thrive. And I'll give you just two examples before we wrap up today. Studio Lux, Brandy, opened another location during the pandemic, while other towns were shuttering. Megan at Hot Cakes just moved her cake shop up from a side street to Main Street. More rent, but more people. These are entrepreneurs who are raising their families here, expanding their businesses here, and helping Warrenton thrive in an economy that has seen so many small towns suffer. But I could do this all day. I don't have to, though, because I can invite you as the final speaker tonight up to Main Street to see it for yourself. As we leave here today, head into town, have dinner outside, pop in a couple shops. And when you start driving home today, maybe you'll start believing in Warrenton too. Thank you. Thank you.